Is it a gravel bike? Is it a road bike? Is it both? Is it the future of the road bike? This is a brand new 3T Exploro Race Max and easily the most radical gravel bike you can buy right now. It follows on from the original Exploro, which launched a few years ago, the first aero gravel bike. And this new bike has a raft of updates, focused on bigger tire clearance and improved aerodynamics. So I've been riding this bike for the last two months with the latest Campag Eckhart 1x13 group set and ultra wide 3T carbon fiber wheels. And in this video, I'll tell you what it's like to ride and live with on a daily basis and go through all the details on this stunning gravel bike. But first, I'm gonna answer your questions because this is a bike that generates lots of questions and you had plenty when I put a request out here on my YouTube community page. So I'm gonna start the video by answering your questions, which center around a few common themes on this new bike. So let's dive in. By far the most common questions I had centered around the clearance between the frame and the tire because as you can see, especially at the seat tube and rear tire, it's very close. But that's deliberate, and through two months of riding here in the Cotswolds, in the peak of the winter, with some quite clagging mud, I had no issues with clearance. Not once did the wheel grind to a halt in the frame. But that said, the clearance isn't as generous as other bikes I've ridden. And on some rides, because of the huge and very flat down tube, a lot of mud would build up around the frame, and while it wouldn't clog, wouldn't cause the wheel to stop rotating, you were carrying around a lot of extra mud on a ride compared to average gravel bikes where there's more clearance around the frame and tire for the mud to just fall through. So no actual issues, but it isn't as generous as average gravel bikes. The tires you can fit on a bike are, according to 3T, a 700 by 42 or 650 by 61. So really big tire clearance on the smaller wheels and they actually developed a new measuring system called WAM and RAM, more on that later, to get around the compatibility issues and the vagaries around tire widths on different rims. So they measured loads of tires on rims to get the actual dimensions so they can ensure the frame delivers the best aero performance by putting a seat tube and the down tube and forks as close to the tires as they can, whilst ensuring it's adequate mud and gravel clearance. There are a few concerns around stones and grit getting caught between the wheel and the seat tube, but I had no issues at all. Never had that telltale sign of a stone getting caught and grinding down the back of a seat tube. And when I changed the tires from the slick tires back to the knobblies before shooting the video, I had a good inspection around the rear of the frame with the wheels out, and there's no scratches, no marks down the inside of the frame there. And if you are worried about scratches, you could easily fit some clear tape around the back of the frame there just to ensure there aren't any potentials for scratches. But in my experience, no issues at all. So the paintwork still looks as pristine as when it first arrived. There's a lot of talk about how versatile gravel bikes can be as a quiver killer perhaps, with a change of tires and wheels to perform well on the road and off-road. And this bike, given the airy design of the frame and fork, prompted a lot of questions around how it would perform as a road bike. So to find out, I swapped these Schwalbe G1 tires for some 28 millimeter wide Continental GP5000 clincher tires and went out on the road and did a comparison test. Now I'll add straight away, not the most scientific test, but an interesting comparison nonetheless. So I have a Scott Addict RC15 on test at the moment with 28 mil wide tires. And I rode a course measuring 5.2 kilometers. And the course features an undulating road a short climb and quite a long descent. And on the Scott Addict, I took nine minutes, 51 seconds, an average 31.8 kilometers per hour. I then rode the same course on this bike with the 28 mil wide Conti tires. And it took me 10 minutes and six seconds with an average speed of 31.1 kilometers per hour. And that really surprised me. I wasn't expecting this bike to be so close to a pure lightweight road race bike. And on the weight front, you're looking at 7.8 kilograms for the Scott Addict and 8.2 with slick tires 
for this bike. So not much in a weight difference. So difference really surprised me against the clock. But what I will say is that the Addict felt faster. It felt easier to build speed, especially on the undulating road when you come to a crest, easier to punch over the crest of the hill. Just felt more responsive and a bit more kind of urgent in its acceleration. But all that said, the 3T didn't feel slow because it clearly wasn't slow against the stopwatch and it did feel fast, just didn't feel as responsive, as keen to uh, build up speed as quickly as the Scott Addict, especially on the undulating road section of my timed course. It felt good on the road in terms of fit and position, but it's much more relaxed than that Scott Addict. So more like an endurance road race bike, so a shorter reach and I felt a bit cramped on the road so I would swap to a 10 mil longer stem to get the same reach. It's a bit higher at the front as well. The gearing from Campag Echo worked fine on the road, had no problems on the fast descent or the undulating road. So the gearing range was good. On the climb, it's not steep enough that on this Scott I had to drop down to a little ring. So I was in the big ring the whole way up and I was in the big ring here because there is only a big ring. Would I use it in a road race or a chain gang? Well, I'd love to try it. At the moment, due to COVID-19, I don't have that opportunity. It will be fascinating to try it. Um, if you're worried about one by, you can fit a front mech and go two by as well to get the gearing range you'd have on a road race bike. So um, yeah, an interesting comparison. It really shocked me how close these two bikes were. But let me know what you think of this time comparison down below. Okay, so those are some of the main questions answered. Now let me go through some of the tech details on the frame before I get to the ride section of this video in a little while. So the bike, as you can tell, is all about aerodynamics and it really moves the game on from the original Explorer, which was the, the world's first aero gravel bike. Some people don't believe in the idea of aero on gravel, but for races like Dirty Cancer, where the speeds are high, aero will matter. Um, and in my experience, this bike is clearly fast on the right gravel roads compared to other gravel bikes which favour comfort and versatility and other aspects. So an aero gravel bike, a lot of changes from the original Explorer as well. To develop this bike, they first started by measuring tyres and rims and coming up with a new convention called WAM and RAM, which is basically the actual width and diameter of the wheels and tyres. Because as you know, the width of the tyre isn't always what it says on the sidewall. It does depend on how wide the rim is. So to get around the vagaries and variables there, they measured loads of rims and tire combinations. They put a list on their website, which is constantly growing. I'll put a link down below. And then with all this information they gathered, they designed a frame to be as aerodynamic as possible because knowing the actual dimensions of the tires meant they can push in particular the seat tube as close to the tire as possible whilst maintaining the clearance necessary for an off-road bike but ensuring the aerodynamics are really optimized as much as possible. And there would be no compatibility issues with different width tires on different width rims. So it's a really interesting piece of work. And personally, I hope the rest of the industry adopt it because as consumers, it's really difficult knowing how wide a tire you can go on bikes because the tire width is dependent on the rim width. And there's so much uncertainty around uh, tire and rim combinations. I get lots of questions from people asking how wide a tire can I go on a certain gravel bike. And tires don't always measure up the same. Two 35 mil tires from different brands might not actually be the same width. So Wham and Ram go some way to addressing the uh, issues in the tire and rim world. So moving on from tires and rims, we'll start with a frame and fork. And it's all about aerodynamics. And starting from the front, we have this very distinctive fork with very narrow, wide blades and a very compact low crown, giving a very short axle to crown length for the fork. We then have a very narrow head tube, despite having a tapered 1.5 inch stereo tube inside, requiring a customized Cane Creek headset bearing to keep the front end as narrow as possible. And then we have full internal cable and hose routing inside the fork and into the top tube, which personally I don't like. It doesn't work for me, but it's a necessary requirement of having such a narrow head tube with a tapered steering tube inside it. There simply isn't space in the head tube to put the cables and hoses. And then we have disc brakes, because it's disc brakes only, and they're using native flat mount 160 rotors. So no adapters like you normally have with flat mount to save weight. 
and give cleaner looks because no adapter. And like on other 3T and open bikes also designed by Gerard Vrooman, the caliper bolts from the front of the fork, which does give a clean look from that side, but it's a bit ugly having two bolts there, but a minor quibble there. Through axles, 12 mil front and rear, of course. And then we move to the down tube, easily the most distinctive part of the frame due to this kind of tapered profile. So where the water bottle mounts to the frame and there are two positions on the down tube, the down tube re really flares out and the idea is simply to move air, flow air around the water bottle to improve aerodynamics. So very striking looking down tube, nice paint job as well to emphasize that sort of uh, flow from the narrow section to the wider section. That goes into a press fit bottom bracket as well. And then we have a seat tube which curves around, hugs the rear wheel up to an internal seat clamp with an aero seat post. And then very skinny dropped rear stays and the chain stays are also dropped as well on both sides to maximize the tire clearance like we've seen on other gravel bikes like the open wide for example. The bike is also reasonably versatile as well. You can fit a third bottle cage to the bottom of the down tube and a bento box on the top tube, although it's set back from the stem due to the cable routing. I don't have any bento boxes I use, a two bolt setup. Most of them have Velcro, so I couldn't try that out. You can fit a front mech, although the frame is optimized around a one by setup. And there are some hidden mud guard mounts as well. The test bike that 3T sent me to ride for the last two months is equipped with the latest Campag Eka 1x13 group set. So I've done plenty of videos on this previously, including a review, link above if you missed that. So go and watch that to find out everything you need to know about this new group set from Campag. So basically a mechanical shifting hydraulic disc brake, one by only 13 speed group set. Um, if you watch my previous videos, you'll know I really like it. And it's one of the best one by group sets you can currently buy. In my experience, it works extremely well off-road and with slick tires fitted to this bike, it works extremely well on the road too. There's fewer of the compromises you normally get with a one by setup, due both to the 13 sprockets on the back and the very clever configuration of the sprockets, which at the business end, when you're going to hammer and tongs on a road or gravel, gives you very small steps between the first six sprockets so you maintain a perfect cadence at all times. When it comes to grinding and crawling up steep climbs, whether on gravel or off-road, the low gear probably isn't as low as some other bikes, but in my experience, I found it okay for most climbs here in the Cotswolds. Um, but if you're going bike packing or exploring in the middle of nowhere with mountains, you might want a lower gear than you currently get with a setup. But for the, the speedy requirements of this bike, the group set more than matches the capability of the bike. And then we have some brand new wheels from 3T, the all new Discus 4045 Limited. And let me tell you, they are so, so wide compared to any other gravel wheel set I've yet tested. So they're 45 millimeter deep, 40 wide externally, and 29 millimeter wide internally, which is wider than many mountain bike rims. So yeah, huge width. And the idea is that they're optimized for a 35 to 40 millimeter wide gravel tire to basically be the same width as a wide gravel tire to give that perfect aero profile you want for an aero bike like this. You also get a nice, stable, broad platform for a wide tire. So at low pressures, there's less squirming, less of that light bulb effect as well. So a very wide wheel set. Um, they look amazing and they do ride extremely well too. That's helped by a low weight, about 1600 grams for the set. And the rims are laced to some very fancy Italian made carbon TI hubs, front and rear with center lock rotors. So a very nice wheel set. You can option different wheel sets on the 3T website. So these are quite a price premium over a regular set of Fulcrums perhaps. But if you want the best aero performance, these are bang on trend. Also enhancing the aero performance of this bike is the 3T Aero Flux handlebar, which has a very flat profile to minimize that frontal surface area. Compact drops with tiny, tiny flare but not flared as other handlebars in their range. And I found it a really comfy handlebar, nice broad base on the flats when you're cruising along, uh, nice compact drops that are easy to reach and work well with the Campag hoods and a 3T stem as well. 
Then we have the 3T seat post, which comes with the frame, of course, and they're using a new Ritchie one bolt seat clamp, which gave me no issues, creaking or anything like that, and it's really easy to set up. And that is topped by a brand new Physique stubby nose saddle, which I found extremely comfy, really nice saddle. So nice, I might have to try and get my hands on one for, uh, for keeps, so good saddle. And on the scales, this size large is 8.45 kilograms with these tires, or 8.2 kilograms with slick tires, just to give some uh, reference points. So pretty lightweight for an aero gravel bike with massive wheels like these. From the first moment you ride this bike, within minutes, you know it's a seriously quick bike. It's a fast bike on any surface. So if you want to mix road with gravel and not be at any disadvantage anywhere, the 3T delivers. It's definitely a speed focused bike then. That much is clear from looking at it and the ride performance certainly backs it up. On gravel, it absolutely flies along. I blitzed some of my faster gravel sections compared to other gravel bikes. It sprints up the speed keenly and generally it aids you in maintaining a high average speed over all terrain. It climbs well too. The big down tube and oversized bottom bracket ensure there's no flex at all and the low weight helps as well. However, it's not the most fluid or relaxed on very rough trails. It requires a fair dose of skill to keep going where you want on fast technical trails with rocks coming at you thick and fast. It's also not the smoothest gravel bike I've ridden. It's a firm ride with quite a lot of feedback evident through the front end and it does jar over bigger impacts. It wouldn't be my first choice if comfort was a high priority. The geometry isn't all that different to a road bike and unsurprisingly, it feels like a road bike with fat tires. So if you're coming from a road bike, you'll feel right at home here. It's suitably aggressive compared to more relaxed gravel bikes. Though that said, the front end is higher than the old Explorer, so it's not as slammed as it could have been. It has quick and sharp handling. It changes direction very nicely. But that said, I didn't feel it could be flung around with the same playfulness as other gravel bikes, like the BMC Unrestricted or the Specialized Diverge. It just isn't what I call fun if your idea of gravel is exploring and chucking the bike around single track trails in the woods. No, it's much happier when you see the gravel road vanish off into the horizon and you just concentrate on producing the watts and let the aero take care of everything else. Go quickly is what this bike is all about and where it really excels. And if you don't think aero matters on a gravel bike, I urge you to try a 3T. You'll soon change your mind. I also had quite a few questions about how this new bike compares to key rivals in the gravel bike market. And I've written quite a few of them, so let me go through a few contenders. Compared to the open wide, which actually comes from the same designer, Gerard Vrooman, as his bike, the open wide is a comfier, more fun bike off-road, but not as fast as the Explorer Race Max. Compared to the Cervelo Espero, well, the difference there in terms of speed is very close. I think these are two of the fastest aero gravel bikes you can currently buy, and they're both compromised to an extent in terms of tire clearance. But Cervelo also feels like a road bike off-road in the same way the 3T Explorer does. And I would happily pick one of those bikes if I wanted a fast, speed-focused gravel bike that trades in a bit of my first tier T and bike packing off-road sort of potential. Compared to the Canyon Grail, the carbon version with the distinctive hover handlebar, I would say this bike is faster, but the Canyon is smoother. You've got that very clever split seat post design that gives incredible seated comfort. And the hover handlebar, when you ride in the tops, does give more front end comfort than this bike, less so when you're in the drops or the hoods. So comfort is a factor, the Grail better delivers, but for pure speed, this bike is easily faster. The Canyon will give you better value for money, more components for the same money or less money than a 3T as well, so that might be a factor for you. And lastly, compared to the Specialized Diverge, probably my favorite and the most exciting gravel bike available right now. A lot of tech on that bike, a lot of capability. When it comes to riding off-road, dealing with bumps and lumps, the Diverge is simply a smoother ride. You've got a future shock in the head tube, which gives amazing front end comfort. And you also have a better seat post, which gives more flex in the saddle. So a smoother ride off-road. So comfort is a factor. 
the Specialized Hazard bike easily licked. When it comes to pure speed on road and gravel, this bike is a better option. It feels more like a road bike, feels more familiar in that way. Um, the geometry isn't as optimized for off-road in the same way that the Diverge is. The Diverge is much easier to throw around in woods and feels more at home when you're riding off-road on a range of surfaces. And it's also a more versatile bike as well. So for bike packing, adventure riding, lots more mounts for accessories, bags, bottles, got down tube storage as well. So for adventuring, bike packing, off-road exploring, I think the Diverge is a better option. But for going fast, this bike is easily the one to go for. So my verdict on a 3D Explorer Race Max then. Well, after two months of riding this bike, I am left seriously impressed. If you want a bike for going fast, this bike easily delivers. And in my opinion, one of the fastest, if not the fastest gravel bike you can buy right now. And as my testing showed, it's also very fast on the road with a change of tires. So if you want one bike with two sets of wheels, that's fast on the road and also fast off-road, then this bike easily delivers on that basis as well. Where some gravel bikes try to be all things to all people, this bike doesn't. It's unashamedly designed to be as fast as possible. I love that singular focus, that design focus to be as fast as possible, both on gravel and on road. And there are a few compromises perhaps in that pursuit of speed, but if you want a more versatile bike, a more comfortable bike, there are better choices. But if you want a bike for going fast and you're all about speed, well, I can't think of a better option than a 3T Explore Race Max. Anyway, let me know what you think of this bike and my review in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away and I'll do my best to answer them. But that's all for now. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Loads of other videos on my channel. I'll put a link up there somewhere and um, I'll see you all again next time. Thank you so much for watching.